My name is Henry Gracie. I'm a third generation jujitsu instructor. And today we're gonna to talk about self-defense the Gracie way. So as a young boy, my grandfather learned Japanese jiu-jitsu from his older brothers who in turn learned it from a Japanese man in the early 1900s. The challenge was my grandfather was very frail. As a young boy, uh, doctors restricted him from involving himself in any type of physical activity because he would run up a flight of stairs and pass out from exhaustion. They didn't know what it was, they just knew that he really couldn't participate in anything strenuous. When my grandfather learned these techniques as a young boy, the challenge was he wasn't as effective as his older brothers because he didn't have the physical attributes that uh, were required to make these techniques effective. Out of necessity, my grandfather began modifying the techniques, reducing the amount of strength, power, and explosiveness necessary to make them work, and he began incorporating more leverage, timing, energy efficiency, and, uh, and technique ultimately. These modifications gave birth to what is now known as Gracie or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Quickly, my grandfather became so proficient at his modified version of the art that he surpassed his brothers in effectiveness. And at that point, he began uh, engaging in challenge fights, Gracie challenge matches in Brazil in the 1930s and 40s and 50s. And it was amazing because his whole goal was to fight as many martial artists of other disciplines as he could to prove the effectiveness of his style in real combat. His thought was, if he's a small, weak, unathletic guy, and he's able to defeat giants up to twice his size, then regular people who saw him you know, effectively utilize these techniques would want to learn self-defense because if he could do it, so could they. And his strategy worked. Soon he became, you know, very popular in Brazil and uh, everyone from politicians to, you know, presidents to businessmen and, and everyday men and women were learning jiu-jitsu from Grandmaster Elio Gracie. So my father was born into this jiu-jitsu fighting family in the 1950s. And from the first day, from as early as he could walk, he was learning jiu-jitsu. Eventually, he got his black belt and graduated uh, from law school in Brazil. And at that point, he realized that even though jiu-jitsu had become very popular in Brazil, it needed to be shared with the world. And he knew that if he could come to America and establish Gracie Jiu-Jitsu in America, that eventually the rest of the world would catch on and, and jiu-jitsu would ultimately reach as many people as possible. So he went for it. He left in 1978 came to America with nothing but a black belt and a dream to share our family's techniques with the rest of the world, got established here in Southern California, and uh, couldn't find an academy to teach at because everyone was still in Bruce Lee mode. They were all about the prettiest punches and kicks, and, and really no one had the, the respect for what our jiu-jitsu represented and the, the close quarters, grappling, submission uh, style uh, of fighting that we had. So he couldn't find a place to teach at, so he had no choice but to open up in his garage here in Hermosa Beach, California. And he began teaching classes to everyone he met in his two-car garage. Every student he met, he invited for a free class. And if that student told a friend, they would get another free class, and their friend would get another free class. So if a student told five friends, the guy would get five free classes and each student would get their class, free class of their own. Little by little, the word spread and it got to the point where he had 130 students training with him every week in the garage here in Southern California and 80 people on a waiting list to get into the garage. So the garage days were very successful, the word was spread and several, several times throughout uh, those years, those 11 years in the garage, you know, students of my father's who practice other disciplines as well, for example, a karate student, would go to his karate master and, and, and basically tell the master about the Gracies and, you know, Horion and teaching in the garage. And the karate master would always kind of shun it off and say, hey, that stuff, you know, doesn't work on us, you know? And that was the beginning of the Gracie challenges that would take place here in America. So every time that happened, the student would notify my father. My father had the open invitation saying, hey, you know, if you believe in your punching and your kicking and your striking based art, bring it to the garage and we'll try it out, you know, and see what happens. So these people would show up on a regular basis and these challenge matches went down and invariably the, the you know, karate, taekwondo, kung fu, kickboxing, boxing masters would come to the academy. Having practiced the same kick for 30 years, they would get there and they would get choked out and usually, you know, less than a minute, maybe two minutes max. And to them it was always a very, you know, eye-opening, shocking experience because here's the kick that they've been practicing for 30 years and against someone who's, you know, smaller, weaker, less athletic, but yet sound in the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu principles, they weren't able to land those kicks and be effective. So 
Jiu-Jitsu started building a name on a very local level here in California. And that's when my father realized that in order for the rest of the world to know what we already knew in the family, it would have to go on television. And that's what sparked the creation of the UFC, the Ultimate Fighting Championship. And that was November 1993. And my father was very clever. He sought out the toughest, baddest, meanest, most reputable martial artists he could find of various disciplines. And then he chose my uncle, his brother Hoist, to represent Gracie Jiu Jitsu. And he did so because he knew that Hoist would be the smallest representative out of all the martial artists in the competition. So if you have guys that are weighing you know, 200 plus pounds and then you put Hoist in there at 178 pounds, my father knew that it would be the greatest testament to Jiu Jitsu, the art, and not the individual using the art. And if people saw Hoist defeat larger opponents with, uh, with nothing but skill, timing, patience, energy efficiency, distance management, and, uh, and, and our techniques, uh, people would be given hope that they too could be effective against a larger opponent in the case that they didn't have the physical attributes uh, to their advantage. So Hoist went in there and proved once and for all that you don't have to be more athletic or stronger or bigger than your opponent to, uh, to prevail in a real street fight. So that was it. And that, that you know, first few UFCs uh, are what put you know, Gracie Jiu Jitsu on the map. Soon after, the US Army contacted our family and requested our assistance in developing a program that would prepare soldiers, you know, rangers, for combat in the least amount of time possible. And, uh, and that's what sparked the development of the Gracie Combatives Program, which is now taught to you know, military and civilians all over the world in terms of self-defense in the least amount of time. And, uh, and that's what I hope to give you guys a little sample of in our, uh, in our discussion today. Gracie Jiu Jitsu is our family's self-defense system that has been used to defeat giants for the last 85 years. Today, we have specialized, amazing programs for men, women, and children. Gracie Bullyproof, teach kids how to assert themselves verbally against the bullies, and if attacked, how to neutralize the situation without throwing a single punch or kick. Women, women empowered. 15 techniques to defend against sexual assault based on the most common threat scenarios facing women. And of course, for men and anyone who wants to learn simple, effective self-defense in the least amount of time possible, we have Gracie Combatives, our, our most effective self-defense program to date. For all of these programs, more information, and to learn how you can learn Gracie Jiu Jitsu from home, go to GracieUniversity.com, check it out, a bunch of free lessons, and uh, if you're not 100% satisfied with the quality of the instruction and the amazingness of the techniques, come to Torrance and you can choke me out for free. Much respect, we'll see you in the next one.